Well, hey, church leaders, so excited to share with you today. And I want to start with a quote that I bet you've heard of. It's the quote that says this. It says, culture eats strategy for breakfast. Super simple, kind of silly, but it's this idea that the cultures of our organization actually trump the strategies that we are employing. And as we're talking about gearing up for Easter, and we're sharing a lot of great strategies, which are phenomenal and super important. We're sharing our marketing tips and our different ideas for how to be effective in our outreach this Easter. But I want to, because I'm a leadership junkie and I love the people side of the work that we do, I wanna challenge you to think a bit about this culture piece because every one of you sit in a seat of leadership, which simply by definition, leadership is influence. And influence means the power to change or affect someone. And I want you to think about that a little bit because as leaders and as church leaders right now, we are super busy with a lot of strategy, a lot of planning, and a lot of the tactics that are essential for us to have a great Easter service. And I don't want to diminish those because all of that is really, really important. But at the same time, there is this culture piece that is really critical to being sure we live out that strategy in a healthy way. In fact, I think it's not one or the other. I think where culture and strategy collide is where extraordinary things happen. And so I want you to be thinking about that this Easter, that as you're preparing for all of the things going on, and here's the reality, there are a lot of things going on, right? Your life is about to become, or if not already, a whirlwind of preparation for Easter. And there's lots of extra things you're doing. There's extra planning, there's outreach, there's preparation. There are just a zillion things coming at you right now. And I want you to fight for time uh, spent time thinking about how do I create extraordinary culture? Because when we live out great culture and combine that with strategy, we really, I believe, will see the outcomes we hope for. So I want to give you just a little bit of, uh, it's my leadership framework that kind of helps me think through how do I make sure as a leader that I really am balancing this culture and strategy piece so that my teams are getting the best from me. And so whatever seat that you sit in, whether you are the senior pastor, whether you're uh, the leader of the first impressions team, uh, whatever seat that you sit in, you have influence with either a team of staff, a team of volunteers, certainly the hundreds and possibly thousands of people who will walk through your doors this Easter are going to be influenced by the work that you do. And so I want you to think through this framework for leadership. I take it straight from the great commandment where Jesus says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And then, of course, the second commandment is love your neighbor as yourself. So love God, love others. That's the first and second commandments. We know that. We internalize that. But this with our heart, soul, mind, and strength piece, I think, gives us a little key into what healthy leadership looks like and what healthy culture can look like. And so let me just give you a little insight into this. This heart, soul, mind, and strength piece, the heart is the relational side for us as leaders. And again, we're in a season that's super busy and we've got a lot of just things to do. And so we're kind of racing through all of that, kind of sometimes barking orders if I'm honest, right? And uh, so we need to, what I often coach myself to do is slow down to see people. And I, like literally, I will put this on a post-it note on my computer. I will write this on the whiteboard in my office. Slow down to see people. Because when we're in busy seasons like this or we have big days like Easter, we are so busy and so frantic that sometimes we kind of bulldoze people. And so if you're like me in that, uh, this relational side of leadership is so critical. And it, and it doesn't like take a lot of time, it just takes intentionality. So as I'm meeting with my volunteers or I'm meeting with some of my other coworkers or team members, can I just slow down and check in? Relationally connect, see them as living, breathing humans who are partnering together to accomplish this great work that we're a part of. So relationally connect, that's the heart. The soul is the spiritual side of leadership. And here we are as church leaders, like, you know, you would think this would be obvious, but again, when we're in these busy seasons of ministry, sometimes we miss the spiritual leadership with one another. 
So how can we make sure that especially our staff teams or our volunteer teams are being spiritually connected and invested in? Because they're going to be so, so um, involved helping us actually share the gospel with others that maybe we're missing the opportunity to spiritually invest in, pour into, pray for one another. So how, what does that look like? The third thing is uh, mind, which is the strategic part. So this you kind of have in spades. For Easter, you've been doing all the planning, you've been doing the preparation, we've been giving you great resources here. But that part is important. And so we need to make sure that we are really identifying what are we doing, how are we doing it, give people good clarifying instruction and, and, and uh, making sure that they have what they need to accomplish our goals. And then the fourth thing is strength, which I say vision provides strength. And so as you're meeting with people, your teams, your volunteers, remind them of why we're doing all of this. That it's not just holding doors or handing out programs or cleaning bathrooms or holding babies or playing music or whatever their role might be but that we do all of those things to create an environment where people can connect to the hope of the gospel. And so, and people need to be reminded of that. We know that vision leaks. And so our job as leaders is to make sure we're keeping that vision front and center, that they are so aware of how everything they're doing connects to this bigger picture, this ultimate goal that we have for Easter Sunday. And so that's my hope for you guys. In the midst of all the busyness, in the midst of creating and implementing fantastic strategy and marketing plans, remember the culture piece. Remember the leadership piece because as a leader, you have influence. You have the power to change or affect the lives of others. And obviously, we are hoping we create environments where people will connect with the hope of the gospel. That is the ultimate goal. But along the way, you get to invest in your staff. You get to invest in your volunteers. You get to invest in that person and walking through the door and if they experience your heart you relationally connect if they experience your soul you spiritually invest if they experience your mind they see the strategy the excellence the purposefulness in everything you're doing and if they feel the strength of vision I believe great culture is going to be a result and that coupled with the strategy is going to lead to extraordinary impact this Easter so I am praying for you, I am cheering you on, and I wanna encourage you to keep leading well because it matters, you matter, we need your leadership, and I'm praying that Easter is a phenomenal season for you and your church.